Still watching uh, Sprint and the very special episode uh, as we are today focusing on uh, tennis and the latest achievement in the history of Egypt regarding uh, Moyar Sharif and the advancement and the achievement of her uh, in uh, France and more specifically at Roland Garros. All this and more during the course of the episode of Sprint today with uh, Dr. Khalid Farou, the expert in tennis. Do doctor, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Ahmed, for having me. Actually, it's a surprise. It's a really good one for all the Egyptian tennis fans and the Arab tennis fans as well. As for Maya Sharif, she was always on, on uh, a top national player, a top Arab player and top yes. African player since she was under 12, 14. Um, she was known all over Africa. She won a lot of national events. She was representing uh, Egypt uh, for international events. Actually, she holds the record for the best Egyptian achievement in uh, Junior uh, uh, World Cup under 14. Yes. With Sandra Samir, uh, they were a really good team. And as usual in our regions, the path to the top is not always up. They mm. stop. Uh, they have problems. They have uh, studies. They change career uh, steps, change uh, decisions, coaches, uh, venues, and then they come back again. This mm. happened with everyone. Yes. They bloom later. They don't uh, reach their peak in the teenage uh, years like Nadal, Federer, or those mm. pl players who have a, a, a paved way, they have sponsors, they have agencies, they have uh, a paved route. Everybody knows what to do next year and they can pick the talent and help her. As for Mayar, she took a more uh, uh, Arab and Egyptian uh, method. She was training in Egypt for a while. Uh, when they saw her uh, talents, she started training in Spain in an yes. academy. Mm. And after a while, she, uh, it wasn't as successful as she was expecting. And she, she uh, came back for Egypt to, to continue her studies in uh, Sanawiya Amma. Yes. And then she went to uh, college tennis, mm -hmm. which is a really good uh, route and good way to tell Egyptians and Arab players that college tennis does not stop you from being a professional player. Mm -hmm. She was really good and she joined one of the Division I uh, colleges and she played really well. Uh, if you're there, and you're lucky to be in one of the top colleges. You're exposed to good coaching, good partners, hitting partners. And uh, the discipline of the, for, the, the foreign way of living in a, in a foreign college as an, a student athlete. Yes. You organize your day, your practice, your fitness, your mm -hmm. uh, sleeping hours. She, she, she learned this. And later on when she, came, she finished her school, her uh, college, she decided that I want to try as a professional, full, fully professional, not doing something else. Uh, so that when I stop playing tennis, I am sure that I did my best. Mm -hmm. I don't have any regrets. I don't know where I was I good enough to be among the top. Was I good enough to, to do something uh, for the first time for, for an Egyptian girl? And sh her longtime coach who started with her in Spain, she talked with him and they decided to give it a go. Yes. And they started working for a long time. And uh, by the beginning of 2019, mm -hmm. she had zero ranking uh, in the WTA. Yes. Of course, she had some ranking before, but she dropped it when they went to college. And mm. she played Fed Cup international events. She was always on top. But to be fully dedicated, fully professional, doing nothing but tennis with this huge sacrifices, she left Egypt for a long time, uh, living abroad alone. Even during the coronavirus, she was staying there alone with very difficult access to course and practice. But I've been in Spain and I, have, uh, I was really close to the way they coached there. They, they foster hard work. They really like hard work and yes. they are so patient. Hmm. They, they don't get up, they, uh, they don't give up early if they don't see early re results. <laughs> they mm -hmm. keep pushing and playing. And they have something uh, special. They accept different styles of play. Hmm. They don't uh, panic from extreme grips or uh, uh, different patterns. Uh, Eastern Europeans, Americans, they have a, sing a similar pattern of players. Any player coming from Eastern Europe, they have a special way of playing. Actually, it turned out that this uh, unique way f for Maillard to play yes. was a surprise for the other girls. Mm -hmm. It helped her a lot. Maillard's game is, uh, uh, is different. It was a surprise for most of them. Some of the traditional coaching were, were going to think that those were liabilities. Actually, she was able, with the help of her coach, to turn all those uh, assets into uh, a surprise for the opponents. Mm -hmm. She's offering a new game for the girls. It's, uh, the, usually, the girls' game is so flat, so close to the net. The ball doesn't bounce high. 
yes. like the boys, mm. because they don't have the power and they don't have the grips. They like to, to penetrate the court, mm -hmm. play so low. And they're really good in digging low and bending and getting the ball up. Mm. Mayara's uh, gave them a different equation. She's kicking the ball so high. Uh, her serve is similar to the best uh, serves in the, in the, in the men. Mm. Uh, for a simple comparison in the match, you're going to find that the girls are serving around 170 kilometers flat serve. Yes. She was serving 120, 130 kick serve. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's slower, but it has lots of rotations and lots of spin. Mm -hmm. And it kicks higher than the shoulder level of the girl. Mm -hmm. And they're not used to it. Uh, it. It's a different equation. It's like playing a boy. And, and the, the heavy spin of the forehand was still kicking so high for the girls, especially on clay. Mm -hmm. And she, she knows exactly her game she and her coach they they planned it very well it's it's not actually done in in weeks it's years of okay. practice and this is the benefit of working with a coach that knows you a long time ago mm -hmm. they have problems and they they try to solve it until they give you this picture um, she has a very uh, detailed plan to play physically she's a really uh, very good condition this is the spanish system Mm. She's using her Egyptian roots plus the, 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 the Spanish school of, of coaching. Uh, how old is she now? She's born in 1996. She's uh, 24, mm -hmm. which is now um, the is beginning of the career. older than average? Is she reaching her peak so early? Uh, how do you see her future years now? Uh, now this is the, the, the new, new peak. Mm. Before they used to say that this is a little bit late. late. Oh. But now most of the girls, uh, Serena, for example, most of the girls now they peak on average around 24, mm -hmm. especially in, in our region, because the path here in our region is not that clear. The, the mm. talent she ID... She needs to study as well. You need... If, if you're abroad, they know as soon as possible that this is a talent. Mm. And they cater and they tailor her studying and her thing, because they know this is, not, this is a sure bet. Mm -hmm. In our region, you're not sure, you don't know. Mm. The girl doesn't know, the system doesn't know, the coach, the sponsor doesn't know. Mm. But in the, in the other regions, they know because they have done it so many times. They have mm. uh, a bench mark to compare. Mm. Uh, at it's this like a market and a business there. Yes. It is work. And it's, it's there every single year. Mm. We have gaps, huge gaps, and then suddenly we have someone like Mayar, and then hopefully we're going to follow up with something. But if we're going to follow up the achievement of Mayar, we have to have a lot of other girls now working under the sea level are about mm. to break in. I hope that we have those, but it, it doesn't come like this. It, it's years mm. of working until you suddenly uh, bloom and mm. blossom uh, and you're under the limelight. It, it, it's, uh, it, it doesn't have to do with luck at all. It's okay. just pure work. And if you're really lucky, you're going to make it. Uh, and Mayor just uh, arrived in Egypt about uh, Today. A, an Tonight. hour ago, yes. Yeah. Uh, with uh, the reception of a representative of the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the deputy of uh, the Minister of uh, Youth and Sports. How did he see the reception of uh, Mayar Sharif? Of course, this is uh, what she deserves. It's, it's a very good mm. thing to Egyptian tennis on the field. The importance place. to her yeah. to be knowing that this is an achievement in the Egyptian tennis, for women at least. Uh, in tennis, and this is a very difficult sport, you need like waves to mm. push you. Because... Uh, uh, professional players are like atoms. They are continuously bombarded. Mm. You keep getting uh, hit all the time and you have to have some energy and some extra uh, help to support you and prove to you that you did something and, and this is your business. This yes. is your job. Mm. Whatever happens, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm already landed on this. Uh, whatever happens next week, this is my job. I am mm. a professional player uh, among the elite tennis players. My country sees this. My uh, colleagues in the circuit mm. sees this. Acknowledgement. Yes. Mm. You've mentioned a very important point about the um, young players, the um, boys, the girls wa watching Roland Garros and watching uh, tennis tournaments all over uh, the year, the Grand Slams all over the year. Because I did see um, a post for the sister of Mayar Sharif speaking that uh, Mayar promised her mother and promised her sisters that she would be there one day and they would be sitting um, in a box of uh, the uh, Roland Garros yeah. court, uh, Philippe Chartier, I yes. think. How do you see the idea of tennis, the uh, possibility for the young men and the young women, the boys and the girls now in Egypt watching yeah. and the popularity of tennis that 
uh, the boys and girls are watching all over the year Grand Slams that we want to be there. We want to win. We're like uh, Muhammad Salah, for example, uh, in football. I want to be like Mayor, for example, uh, in the near future. How do you see the popularity of tennis and uh, the efforts of the Federation and the government uh, at the same time? This was uh, Rana, her elder sister. Yes. And uh, the funny thing, uh, Dalia didn't be believe this is the naughty one on, <laughs> on, on her no sister. No one would believe. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, we're going to go, but we're not going to take you with us, Dalia. Uh. Um, usually, the, 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 um, when you s achieve a dream like this, they usually s say that if you have a big dream, it, it's better to ink it. Don't mm. think it. Mm. You have the courage to ink it and say it, write it. Yes. Uh, most of the people, uh, uh, they have dreams, but they're afraid to mention it. They have afraid to verbalize it. Because as soon as you verbalize it, you, you have to be up to your words. Mm -hmm. You have to prove it. Because everybody is, is not going to believe. Uh, if you have the courage to say it, then you have to follow through. Yes. Because you, you committed yourself. Mm -hmm. If you have a dream deep inside you, you don't have the com commitment. Because people are not going to say that you, you said something and you couldn't uh, perform. Mm -hmm. You couldn't uh, deliver. Um, I remember when uh, Jim Courier, the American player who won Roland Garros, which is not common for Americans to win on Roland Garros. Yes. He was watching uh, Roland Garros, mm. like what happened with Maya? She was saying, I was watching Federer winning the Roland Garros, mm. and, and she, she remembered this. It was like a spark. Mm. Courier suddenly, for them. Yeah, suddenly said to his friends, I'm going to win Roland Garros. Mm. And they started laughing because it, it's weird for Americans mm. to win Roland Garros. He didn't say any other tournament. And he actually delivered. He won Roland Garros. Mm. Sampras said, I'm going to win Wimbledon. And he, he won it so many times. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you commit, you say that you have to, to, to do something and you have the courage to tell your friends. I remember one of our top players, Tamer Sawi, when he was young. Mm. Uh, we were in Ahli Club also together. He said that when I'm 15, I'm going to play uh, Roland Garros. Mm. I was older than him and uh, I was surprised that he can't do this. And he delivered. He did this. Maybe two or three years later, but he delivered. He did this because he, mm -hmm. was, he has the courage to believe the dream. Mm -hmm. when, you, when it comes to the surface, it means that you're full up with this dream. Every cell in your body believes the dream and actually you're able to, to say it. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need to ink the dreams, as you said, doctor, yeah. but uh, we need more generations. We need more players, as in Spain, for example, mm -hmm. as in uh, the United States, for example, that we need... 10 or 20 players from Egypt in the ATP, in the WTA, who are always uh, at the Grand Slams, always competing, even uh, from Russia as well, and from Poland, and from different countries for the WTA in specific. What is needed, as we can see the political leadership um, under President Abdel Fattah Hassisi, there is willingness to be um, generating players all the time at the level of sports. Uh, to be generating talents, to be having more and more talents um, at different sports, at different levels, uh, to be reaching the high levels of those tournaments and winning them. What is needed, in your opinion, to be having a lot of players, not just a single player? Because I know as uh, in the individual sports like swimming, like uh, tennis, it is very expensive to be uh, reaching, even going to those tournaments, not just preparing for those tournaments, not just preparing to be a tennis player at any level, it is very expensive as well. I did a presentation for the International Tennis Federation mm. about Talent ID. It was based on uh, uh, some, a lot of studies and some really nice books about identifying talents, not just in sports, mm. in whatever, and how do those people make it. Yes. In whatever field. And they have the idea of a hotbed, a place that is famous of making talented people in a certain area, mm. like Brazil in football, yes. like Russia in ballet or for dancing, mm -hmm. and uh, female tennis players. Uh, certain schools that have a tradition of uh, putting uh, its, player, its students in elite uh, universities. Yes. What's the secret? And the, the, the people travel to these places. Mm. And they sat with the teachers and the coaches to figure out why. Why <laughs> do this place do this? Yes. And what is their secret formula? Mm. Why do people in that place succeed in this specific area and other people do the same thing, maybe more expensive things, and they don't make it? Yes. And they ended up with a lot of recommendations mm. and a lot of things that some of them are really famous now. It's, it's like the 10,000-hour uh, plan. Mm. 
Mm. They say that you can't be a professional or an elite in any uh, field of the, uh, unless you spend 10,000 hours of working. Uh, mm. It's not just talent, it's just building networks inside your body mm. between the nerve cells and you program mm. your body in a certain way. It's like Lego. They say yes. that the human beings, uh, it's not smart to put all the talents in every human being because you'll never know what you're going to do. Mm. You're going to be a surgeon, uh, athlete, a uh, famous actor, you, you never know. But when you start working in a certain area, your body the, the, uh, feels that this is really important and you start building networks. Mm. Networks that inside your body, inside, inside your, body. your brain. Yes, and these networks mm. get more complicated and more uh, connections happen, which makes the impulse travel so fast. That's why some athletes, for example, Usain Bolt, he tried football yeah. and he didn't managed to be succeeding yes. in football although he is very fast and he could be uh, using his legs michael jordan in uh, golf from basketball to golf uh, switching sports isn't easy even for exactly. the top athletes it's in highly specific yes in a specific theory sport. say it's highly specific mm. even for your place in in, in, a, in a team mm. it's not just football exactly your place where you are sometimes you find a goalkeeper uh, his son is a really good goalkeeper. Yes. It's not just talent. Mm. He knows the inside business and he's trained like this for hours and years and years mm. until this is happening. Mayar is uh, giving us the spark. Um, on a micro level, talking with her sisters now, I'm coaching them in the Ahli club. They're already uh, they motivated. They, they're really good players. They're national tennis players. Oh. They, they were all representing the national team. They're really good. Oh. The, um, Mayar is second one, Rana is her uh, partner in doubles, they are the best doubles teams in Egypt, they help us win uh, national uh, Fed Cup, which is an international uh, team event for, for women, they yes. play African Championship, they won the African Championship together, uh, Dalia is the third one, Mayar is the second, Rana is the first, and Rawan is the youngest. Mm. Uh, the three of them have already gone to college tennis so, in the so States. We should be having more attention to the family of yeah. Mayar Sharif. Do you know, uh, yes. it's like uh, uh, Pliskova, her, her twin ah. sister is playing in Grand Slam. Yes. The, uh, Serena and Venus, it's easy when the family knows, the, the inside business knows how it goes, because tennis business is really specific. Mm. You spend a lot of time to figure it out. When you figure it out, it's easy for, for, for the second one. Mm. Same idea like the hotbed in, in Russia, they know it. Yes. It's very easy. They know the problems before in the last uh, attempt and everyone, every time they, they make it even better. Mm. But now when I'm talking with them, Mayar gave us uh, a way to talk about tactics and strategy. Because in Egypt, we're playing local tennis a little bit, building tactics among, uh, uh, among each other. Yes. But when you're international mark, uh, venue like this, some of the tactics that Mayar is using, they, they don't approve it. Even mm. her sisters, they don't approve it. Mm. They, they don't see the logic behind it. Sometimes a very simple plan uh, could work. Could work. Mm. The Egyptians think it's more complicated than this. Mm. Actually, I was talking with the one, the younger one, which is playing a match about adopting the same uh, Mayar's technique in the serve. We're practicing mm. on it even before uh, seeing that match. And I yes. saw this as a chance to implement it and reinforce it. Mm. I, I spent a lot of time convincing her. She even talked to the Mayar mm. to convince her why they're using this kind of serve. Mm. Why don't you change it and surprise the opponent? The percentage, the idea of the percentage tennis, mm. it, it's not clear to them. And it's a, a very good way of uh, presenting uh, details about the game to, to young players. It's not just running uh, and tracing the ball. It's tactics mm. and hard work and fitness and discipline. Yes, mm. speaking of uh, fitness, we can see footage of uh, the game, the match between uh, Mayor and uh, Plushkova uh, at Roland Garros. She won the first uh, group and she lost uh, the other two. Why do you think she lost? Do you think that she was overly excited after winning the first um, game or the group? Uh, was she um, ha experiencing fatigue, for example, because she played yeah. at least three or four matches before this game against uh, Plushkova? What were the main deficiencies in the performance of Mayar Sharif? Actually, I don't think it's a deficiency. Mm. It's something that uh, normal that happens in the match. It's a, it's a fight, and when the top players figures out how to solve the, the problems you're offering, mm. and he gets the lead, it's like the cushion of having a two, lead, a two games uh, a lead. Mm. It's a little, a little bit more comfortable. Yes. And you start to doubt yourself. 
and he's gaining more confidence. Mm. And when he has the lead, uh, they, they, call, they call them a very good front runner. Mm. When he's above and uh, having a lead, it's very difficult to catch up with him mm. unless they stop and they start the, 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 the final set. Mm. But in the second set, Pliskova got the lead. The plan that was working with Mayar, uh, she started to figure it out because I, I, I was telling you it, it's a surprise game. The game mm. was not familiar to Pliskova. Mm. Maybe, of course, her team have watched Mayar, but yes. she couldn't figure out that this is that difficult. Mm. She thought that I know she's a little bit different, but I don't think that it's, it's going to make some problems for me. Yes. And uh, Pliskova, she said that she's coming from a final in Rome. And as I tell, told you before, a different surface. It's, it's already clay, but it's a different mm. place. And she switched to different clay. And sometimes the, the, the highly ranked players, their weakest uh, performance is in the early rounds. Mm. More, maybe they're not motivated enough. They're used to the later stages, mm. the fans. But, but she lost. The, second the next round, game. yes. yes the she next lost game. second she round. Lost. Uh, I don't know. She's not motivated enough. But definitely, Mayar has a role in this. She, she told her that something is wrong. Mm. You, you, you're playing, you, you barely passed. Uh, and maybe she played um, a very good game against Mayar Sharif. She so got tired. She maybe. couldn't, yes. Maybe, because Carry playing on. the whole week in Italy and then playing three sets against Mayar, it was a really physical match. Mm. Mayar was tracing everything. Mm. She has the it, it, For Mayar, this is the, uh, the event. Th did she suffer from fatigue, Mayar, uh, in the next two um, groups against uh, She was doing a superhuman effort. Mm. She's really prepared for this, but the motivation the, the the thrill of playing in that stadium, the dream, and her game, I was saying that it's, it's not a typical uh, female tennis game. Yes. It's a typical game, mm. and it needs a lot of effort. The kick serve that she's playing, the heavy spin, if the girls do, don't play this because they don't have the, the power and stamina to mm. kick the ball that high. Yes. The, they find a different route, playing slower, uh, mm. lower and faster, because the kick needs energy. Mm -hmm. Because some of your uh, effort is going in spinning the ball, not sending the ball straight. Yes. And of course, if the ball is uh, spinning slow, it's like a sitting duck for the girl. Mm. When, you, when you get a little bit tired and you start doubting yourself, the girl mm. starting killing the second serve. Mm. And as soon as she gets the lead, uh, Mayor was uh, a little bit shaken. But mm. she, she gathered herself in the, the final set and she did a really good comeback and she was really close. Mm -hmm. uh, at times, I was not sure that Pliskova was going to win. Mm -hmm. I thought it, it, it's an equal chance for both of them. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what's next for Mayor Sharif and hopefully her sisters and the other players who yeah. watched her as Roland Garros? Uh, I think uh, I was just telling some parents in Ahli Club, they're talking a lot about what's happening and they yeah. asked me in details. What's the secret? How did she make it? Mm. Uh, I was close to Mayar uh, sometimes during her career in the national team, traveling with her. Um, everyone is asking now. I was telling them, I think at, at, at this moment, Mayar is not having the same pressure that we're having uh, as young players. Because mm. now it's her career. Mm -hmm. She already established a career. Before, it was either my studies, my tennis, Ahli, mm. international. I don't know where I'm going. The players now, they, they're lost. They don't know. I, I, have, I have it in me to play international, to play at this level. I don't know. And every mm -hmm. win makes you feel that you can do it. And every loss, next day, you feel, mm -hmm. maybe I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I, my heart lost. But she's sure. Not only he, she is sure. Everyone is sure that she already established her place. Same loss for another girl in Egypt. Maybe she's going to stop playing. Mm -hmm. Because we're not sure I'm God or not. We don't have reassurance. Now, some of the people play, thought that those players playing for money and for international standards, they have pressures. Mm. They have, but not the same pre pressures mm. we have. Because the team... It's a job. Yes. Mm. It's like a good day in job, job, bad day in job. Yes. It's, but it, actually, it's my job now. Mm -hmm. The youngsters, they, it's not their job. And they're still young. Everything is a problem for them. Dealing mm. with parents, with coaches, with my friends, my image. Everything mm. is a problem. But for that, she's, she's an adult now. Mm -hmm. And luckily for us and for her, the route is clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm hoping that this uh, limelight and exposure will help her with the, uh, the fuel to go on. Because it's very expensive mm -hmm. to travel and, co and be, get coached and have uh, a supporting team. 
I know mm -hmm. she has her Spanish coach, a Spanish coach with her, but all the others have teams. Yes. You need hitting partners, you need uh, physios, you need traveling coaches, not mm -hmm. only one coach, uh, because nobody can travel the whole year with you. It, yes. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really expensive to have a team traveling with you. Imagine that you have three people traveling with you, four people. Uh, compare those to Djokovic and uh, Serena, who don't want mm -hmm. to stay in the bubble with the players. They have already apartments in the Grand Slams uh, cities. cities yes. they, they don't live there. They, mm. they, they have their own system. Mm. They have the money. That's why they don't allow coaching in, in, in individual uh, tennis matches. Mm. Because they say if we allow coaching, we're favoring the highly ranked players because they can afford of having uh, an elite coach sitting in their uh, box. Mm -hmm. But the other uh, coming players, upcoming players, they don't have this luxury. Mm. Some of them are traveling alone. Some of them have hitting partners. Some of them are sharing coaches with each other. Mm -hmm. But for when, uh, when, play, when playing team events, they say that any country can nominate one coach. We are not asking yes. for a lot of coaches. That's one coach for selected weeks. But individual uh, tennis, it's, it's very expensive. Very expensive. Of course, yes. And uh, we are hoping for, uh, hoping for um, a better ranking for Mayor Sharif, better performances at the upcoming uh, Grand Slams uh, as well and you have inside information uh, from her sisters Dr. Khalid Farooq the uh, sports analyst and the tennis expert thank you very much for being with us tonight on Sprint thank you Ahmed thank you for having me anytime and uh, this brings us to the end of uh, Sprint for this week thank you for watching and goodbye